the clean is a pull off of the floor that is accelerated through the from the floor all the way up to the point where your feet break contact with the ground and stop applying force to the bar. At that point, the barbell must contain sufficient momentum to keep going up even though you're no longer applying force to it. Because when your feet break contact with the floor, you can't apply any more force to the bar between your hands and feet and the bar. From that point on, it goes up under momentum, which amazingly enough goes away pretty quick. So you've got a very short period of time to catch the bar on the shoulders. In other words, the, the clean is, a, is a, a throw and a catch. You're throwing it up and catching it on the shoulders. So the catch must happen in an efficient way. And we've got to learn first today how to catch the bar at the, at the top of the, of the pull. You've got to learn to turn the pull into a catch. And that's the first part of this process that we're going to learn today. And we have developed a way to teach you how to do this that involves not pulling the bar all the way off of the floor. And it involves a jump. The teaching of this involves a jump. Now, the execution of an actual clean does not involve a jump. That's not the way to think about a clean. An actual clean is accelerated long before the bar gets to the top. Because if you wait to the top to accelerate it, then you miss an opportunity to make the bar move faster. And an efficient clean is if you're, if you're cleaning a heavy enough weight, an efficient clean must be accelerated off the floor. But we're teaching you the movement today in a way that you can use to teach people that don't know how to clean how to do it. And the teaching of the clean involves teaching a jump, even though we're not going to use a jump later. So this is the teaching method. So everybody pay attention to these three phases of the teaching method, and you'll see how this comes together. So what we're going to do in phase one of the teaching method is we're going to, we're going to learn three positions. <clears throat> and then we're going to jump with the bar in our hands, and then we're going to jump and catch the bar. Okay? So I want you to deadlift the bar up to the top of the deadlift. All right, just, just grab it and pick it up. All right, now, stand up all the way to the top. Now, <clears throat> your stance will be the same as you used yesterday on the deadlift. It's going to be fairly narrow, maybe not quite that narrow. Not like that. Chest will be up. Primary difference in this and the lockout portion of the deadlift is the grip width. All right. In the deadlift, we are trying to use a grip that reduces the range of motion of the pull. Because if you grip it too wide, you have to pull, pull the bar further than if you grip it narrow. But our consideration on the clean is not the range of motion, because the range of motion in the clean is determined by there. We're going to the shoulders. So. We're going to take a grip width that facilitates rotating the elbows easily under the bar so that the bar racks on the meat of the deltoids. So what we're going to start with is a grip that's about one hand width wider than we used on the deadlift yesterday. And for most people, this, facil this facilitates the elbow rotation, all right? So this is going to be called the hang position, H-A-N-G, the hang position, okay? The hang position is one of the positions we're going to memorize for the teaching method here. 
So he is now in the hang position. Chest is up. Elbows will be rotated in. This is going to be pronation or internal rotation. And we're going to teach this right now because what we're going to try to do today in the clean for everybody in the room is to eliminate this. This is arm pull, all right? Arm pull has no place in a clean, all right? A correctly executed clean does not do this. You're never in this position in a correctly executed clean. So we're going to remind you not to do this by snapping your, your forearms into pronation to remind you that this thing stays straight, okay? And this is the hang position. Now, I want you to get the bar up on your shoulders. And your elbows will be up in this way here and in. And you'll notice that when he pulls his elbows up and in, that more deltoid meat comes up. This is shoulder flexion. This is shoulder extension, shoulder flexion. A flexed shoulder will feature the bunched up deltoid and some of the pec because we want the bar in contact with his shoulders. You do not catch a clean in your hands. You catch the clean on the shoulder. And this presents the shoulder to the bar effectively. So it's up and in. And this is called the rack position. Okay? So when we tell you to rack a power clean, this is where it goes. All right? So when you, when you learn your rack position, mess with it as much as you need to to get as much muscle belly meat under the barbell as you can find, all right? Now, we are going to learn the bar path starting right now. Now, our physical science class Friday night taught us that the universe likes nice, straight, vertical lines, right? Now, a clean cannot be executed with a perfectly straight vertical line, but your model is a perfectly straight vertical line. That's what you'd like to be able to do. So, what we're going to do now, I'm going to have him drop the bar and catch it, and I want it to fall straight down his shirt. In other words, I don't want him to uncurl the bar with his arms because look where the bar is, way out in front of you. We don't want it there. Where do we want it? We want it as close to a straight vertical line over the middle of the foot as we can get, don't we? So if we learn to drop the bar down the shirt and catch it, then we're going to start beating the idea of a nice vertical bar path into his mind from the start. Just There you go. Now, we're back in the hang position. Fix your grip width. Now, the third position that we're going to talk about this morning is the jumping position. Okay? I want you to Widen your stance back to your deadlift width. That's too wide. Right there is fine. Now, I want you to unlock your knees and your hips at the same time. Unlock knees and hips at the same time. No? Just unlock them. Just barely unlock them. And when you do this correctly, the bar will be against the middle of your thigh someplace, all right? A little more hip, all right? And obviously, the position that the bar will be against your thigh will be determined in large part by your anthropometry. If you've got little bitty short arms, the bar will just be right below your crotch. If you've got long, monkey, gibbon-like arms, orangutan arms, 
then it'll be down closer toward your knees, okay? Uh, don't let the bar hang in your fingers. Grip the bar. This would be a good time to go ahead and make a hook grip if you know how to do that, all right? And that'll allow us to measure the jumping position accurately. Now, I want you to note that his knees and his hips are unlocked. Both of them are unlocked. All right, knees only looks like this, hips only looks like that. This must look like this. This is the jumping position. Now, once we have figured out how to unlock knees and hips at the same time, the jumping position becomes the place on the thigh that the bar is touching right now. All right, so I want you to memorize that place and the contact of the bar at the jumping position. Listen carefully. Every time you do a clean, from now until you die for the rest of your life, you will touch the bar to that point on the thigh that you are memorizing. You will touch the thigh right there like that. That is the jumping position, this place on the thigh. Okay? Chest is up. All right, jumping position. Jump. Good. Just exactly like that. Again, jump straight up in the air. The most important aspect of this phase of the teaching progression is that the elbows do not bend as you come off the ground. Again, jumping position, jump. And you'll notice that as he goes up, his elbows stay straight. And the bar leaves the thigh at this position because of the momentum generated by the jump. Notice that his upper back moved backward a little bit, and that the bar moved forward from the cantilever of his body's mass going a little backward. Look at it again. Jumping position, a little more knee than that. There, go. This is perfectly normal. There's going to be a little tiny bit of backward upper body, and as a result, forward bar. We want to minimize it to the extent possible, but that's a part of a normal clean. One more time. Unlock knees, a little bit more knee, and go. Just jump straight up in the air. Elbows do not bend. All right? And you'll notice that he just lands with his knees to cushion the jump, just like you would if you had jumped up in the air without the bar. All right? One more time, watch how he lands. He cushions the, the drop with his knees. This is how you catch a, a clean, all right? Now, he's jumping with straight elbows. He's leaving the ground. And the next part is to jump and catch the bar in the rack position, all right? And this will be the top of the clean. Let's see it. Jump and catch. Good. And the hands open to facilitate the bar on the deltoids. Once again, Note that he does not catch the bar in his hands. The weight of the bar is on the shoulders. Go. Just exactly like that. And he drops it right down his shirt. Again. Jump and catch. Just like this, okay? Everybody sees this. Okay, set the bar down. Get comfortable with the idea that on the way up, 
in the clean, the elbows are straight. And then, after you've jumped up with straight elbows several times, then you're going to jump and rack the bar. And that's where you will learn that the elbows bend on the way back down, not on the way up. And you'll notice that when he jumped up, his elbows stayed here, and that when he caught it, his elbows moved forward. His elbows were never here. Elbows are never here in a clean. Because this is how you arm pull. So it's important that right now we unlearn the arm pull. This is what we're trying to do. Everybody in the room thinks this is how the bar goes up. We've got to unlearn that. Because this is an upright row. And we're not doing upright rows, we're cleaning. The bar goes up because hips and knees extend and impart momentum to the bar through acceleration. That's how the bar goes up. Once we have learned how to rack the bar at the top, what remains is to tack the floor pull onto the part of the clean that racks the bar at the top. And the way we're going to do this is very slowly at first because we're trying to maintain in, in the mind of the person learning this thing, the idea that the bar must touch the thigh on the way up for reasons that will be explained later. You have to touch the bar on the way up to the thigh. Most obvious thing, of course, is that if you don't touch the thigh, then the thing's out in front of you. But we don't want the bar path forward. We want it in close so that we maintain a nice, efficient pull. So what we're going to do is learn this in three steps. So the first step we're going to do will be the, the jump and catch that we just did in step one, in phase number one. So pick the bar up in hang position. Hang position is the clean grip, this sort of thing. Good, just exactly like that. Stance will be the same as the deadlift. Chest is up. Elbows are straight, and this is the rotation. It's, it's pronation, internal rotation, okay? So get in the jumping position, unlock knees and hips, just like that. Jump and catch, just like that, good. Again, just a couple of times. Jump, catch, just like that. Drop the bar down the shirt, just nice and close, all the way down. And one more. Unlock knees and hips, measuring the jumping position on the thigh, jump and catch. Just like that, good. Now, the second step. <clears throat> We're going to go down to a position just below the knee, just above the tibial plateau, uh, tibial tuberosity, I'm sorry, and just below the patella, just below the knee. And what we're going to do to get it down there is just slowly slide it down the thigh. And in this position, you will be in the same place you would be during a deadlift were the bar at this, at this level. So that means here. That means that shoulders are still out in front of the bar. It means that the shins are almost vertical. Push them back a little, knees back a little bit. This is the position that the bar would be in and that you would be in were the bar coming up off the floor at this point. Now, I want you to pull the bar slowly, very slowly up. Wait just a sec, let me, let me finish. Go ahead and stand up. What we're going to do is pull the bar up from this position just below the knee. And right now, we're going to pull the bar slow. We know that later we will accelerate, but right now we're learning to touch the thigh at the jumping position. So we're going to pull slowly up. When the bar comes in contact with that place on your thigh that you've identified as the jumping position, you will jump and catch. It's a trigger. There is no pause there. 
Slide it up slow. Go slow now. Touch the jumping position, jump and catch. So slide it down. Remember, hips are back, shoulders are forward, just like this. Slide it up, just exactly like that. Catch it at the hang again. Feet a little closer than that, feet a little closer than that. That's a little low. Pull it right there's the position we're looking for right now. Slowly, just exactly like that, again. And what you're thinking about now is where the bar is on the thigh. Identifying the jumping position every time and jumping and catching from there. It's a little too fast. Take your time. We'll get fast later. Take your time. Remember that elbows are perfectly straight during this position. Just exactly like that. And catch it at the hang. So that's the second position. Now, the third position is going to be down on the shin, down in the, in the lower middle shin, where the bar would be were there plates on it. So this is the floor pull, okay? And this must look like your deadlift. Hips will be high, bar over the middle of the foot. Take your time once again. Knees are too forward. This is what you're going to have to get used to. I want your toes out a little bit more than that. Hips are here, lower than that. No, no, the bar lower than that. There you go. When you put your lifter in this position, a little bit lower than that even. Check and make sure this looks like a floor pull. Now, slowly take your time and you're identifying the jumping position. And when you hit it, you jump and catch. Again, just exactly like that. A Little bit lower than that, good, right there. Take your time now. Slowly pull, jumping position, jump and catch. And this is a complete power clean. Again, one more time. A Little closer stance than that. Don't let your stance get splayed out during this process. Gather it back up every time. Ready? Up. Good. Elbows stay straight all the way up and they bend on the way down. Thank you, catch it and set it down. Now, now that we've finished the second phase of the teaching progression, we're gonna to go to the third phase. We're gonna put some weight on the bar this time. And what we're gonna find is that the weight on the bar changes the emphasis from the motion itself, from correctly performing the motions to actually lifting the weight, okay? Now, this is a good time to, to elaborate on something that we left out previously. And the reason we left it out is because it doesn't need to be in there. Come up on your toes and shrug back like this. Elbows are straight. See this position? Every correct clean will go through this position. The eyes will not be on the ceiling. They'll be over here in the floor. If you raise your eyes during the clean, you're going to loop the bar. Don't do that. But this position, look at it. Knees are extended. Hips are extended. The acceleration has carried him up onto his toes and his shoulders are in this position. We're talking about using the top part of the traps up and through here to shrug. Now, why didn't we talk about this before? Because you're doing it anyway. And we didn't need to draw your attention to it. When do you learn how to shrug the bar? When we put the bar in your hands and told you to jump up in the air. That first step where you jumped up in the air with straight elbows before you even racked it, every one of you did a shrug. The shrug is a reflex. The shrug happens whether you want it to or not. It certainly happens whether you think about it or not. All right? If you're going to do it anyway, why would I call your attention 
to that process that's going to happen automatically, thus giving you another thing to have to think about during all this new movement. Right? That wouldn't make any sense, would it? So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the shrug alone until we get to this phase of the teaching. Okay? If it's going to happen anyway, I don't need to make you think about it. I don't need to articulate it as a step. Okay? But now that we are doing the bar with some weight on it, we're going to think about the shrug as a way to help you finish the top of this pull with straight elbows. Now I want you to go back down into the jumping position, and like I said, we're going to do each one of these positions we just got through with, but we're only going to do them one time. All right, so the pressure is on. You have to do it right. Now this time, when you go to the jumping position and you're going to jump and catch the bar, you're going to make sure you think about having shrugged into the top with straight elbows. Jumping position, jump and catch. Use your shrug. Okay. Now, below the knees, eyeballs. Take your time again. We're not in a hurry yet. Slowly. Up. Good. And the elbows stay straight. Now, this time, you're going to reach down, just touch the floor. Make sure you touch the floor in the correct floor pull position, which means shoulders over the bar, hips back. Just touch. Take your time. That's correct. Take your time. Just exactly like that. Catch it at the hang. Set it on the ground. Now, set up a correct floor pull and clean. Once again, we're going slow because we're still learning where the jumping position is. Mid-thigh. Touch it every time. All right? This is probably where, if he gets in a hurry, he will start pulling from the knees. In other words, he'll pull early. He'll pull, he'll pull too low. If that happens, you tend to jump forward. Wait till the bar touches the jumping position, jump and catch. Go slow. When this is beaten in to the movement pattern, then we will start accelerating off the floor. But right now, we're still learning to touch the thigh. Go ahead. Take your time. Big tall shrug at the top with straight elbows. Good. Just like that. Set it down and one more time. A little back a little bit more than that. There you go. Okay. You see him jump forward. Where did he touch the leg? Was it low? Did you see? I couldn't see. Plates were in the way from him. Okay. We'll fix all of that. At some point during this process of going from very light all the way up to what you're going to do for a work set, at some point during that process, you will begin to accelerate the bar. Procedure was slow, 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 slow jump at the top, right? At some point, the procedure will become slow off the floor, and then the higher the bar is, the faster it's moving, which means acceleration, okay? The higher the bar is, the faster it's moving. 
But if you do that before you're ready to, you will miss the jumping position on the thigh. Okay? You'll miss it. You'll start jumping at the knees. You'll start jumping low and you'll start jumping forward. So take your time for the first three, four, maybe five sets. And just go slow, 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 jump. When you feel as though your pull is in good control, then start pulling fast off the floor. You'll squeeze it off the floor and then accelerate. Touch the thigh. Straight elbows. Jump into the top. Climb up into the top with a shrug, with straight elbows. And then, on the way down, elbows go forward and you rack the bar. 